but it's a true story. And I'm here today to do another edition, we've already done one, of Record Collection Must Have. And this one is an extra special one for the holiday season because everyone loves musicals and musicals make, make everybody happy. And so that's what we're doing today. And I'm here with the lovely and talented Miss Allie and Caroline, the true crew. They're always behind the scenes and now they're in front of the camera and they are both amazing actresses and singers, which I'm not either one of those things, but they are. So we're here to discuss, we're here to give you about a dozen ideas of great musicals, both from film and from the stage, that you should have in your record collection because everybody needs musicals in their record collection. And I think we forget that sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is instead of just taking our turns, we're all gonna weigh in on what we think. And of course, we have to start with like probably everyone's favorite musical. I know it's up there for me, Grease. Grease. This is the soundtrack from the movie and of course it was an amazing stage play too. So. Do you guys have a favorite song? I think Freddie My Love I Need It. Right? If you don't have this in your record collection, I'm not kidding around, you must have it. <laughs> Allie, you want to take a turn? Let's do one of the best musicals ever. Oh my god. The chorus line. Oh my um, god. It's what musicals are all about. Because I will tell you a story which is true. I recently acquired this for my record collection from an old camp friend. And I have to tell you that when you're down and out, if you put one, you know, like one singular sensation, I'm not gonna sing. That song will make your day. And also, my favorite is Dance Dan Look 3. So look at that. Oh, up. yeah. Look at that. Also, the best. Sing is hilarious and so good. How about you, Caroline? What would you pick? Um, my favorite music of all time is Rocky Horror. Just, I can't. Just all of it. All of it. Right? It's just so good. We're going to come right back around. I'm going to take you guys way back, way back to the 1960s. This is hair. You know, this was a musical that came out of a very turbulent time when civil rights were a uh, very, uh, very big issue in this country and there was a lot of civil unrest and, you know, it's a good thing it doesn't really apply anymore. Oh my God, I'm just kidding. I'm so ready for another Age of Aquarius right now. I can't even stand it. But this is actually, this one is from the original Broadway recording and there's so many great songs on here, up to and including hair itself, but there is, if there's ever a time that we could just do a little peace, love, and happiness yeah. and not get into some crazy ass war, I think the lessons of hair are still very present. Um, how about you, Allie? What else we got? Next, we have Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Uh, we all just saw this. Oh my god, it's so movie. good. It's so, it's just art out on stage. It's so fantastic. It's so, it so makes you think, it so makes you feel. That's the what theater does. We're all aspiring to have Hedwig as a soundtrack. We don't have it physically. Yeah. Um, this is a really important production <laughs> to me. Uh, this movie. made it safe for Redhead, really. Yeah, uh, it was really important for the representation for me because before this, I didn't, I, there was no outlet for me to go see anything of singing, dancing Redhead. Right. That is my dog. Right. And let's say that like Jay-Z, like it's been sampled, man. Like Annie's relevant to this day. And yes. that's a beloved music. Come on. Guys, I have to pull this one out, and this is actually by original, I mean really original. It has like my tiny little baby handwriting on it. It's West Side Story. It's actually the music from the film, which starred Natalie Wood, but as a stage show, I will tell you in my own personal experience, I played Action Boy. Yeah, it was a co-ed <laughs> production, and I still got cast as a boy, but, um, and I can't sing. But this is, if there's anything that will ever lift you up, you know, just listening to Maria or any of the songs on here, it's just what's that story now? I'm a jet, I'm a shark, I don't know. I'm both. <laughs> I don't know. Chicago. Just the best ever. I was like raised with this soundtrack, which is really funny and may not be appropriate, but um, <laughs> it's I would, totally appropriate. I would be running around the house singing these songs when I was three. It's what got me into musical theater. It's such a good musical. It's such a solid musical. Yeah. It's so powerful, it's like so many powerful women singing. It's, it's, right. it's about murder. Yes. But like a happy version yeah, of murder. Yeah, like, like an upbeat, happy. sexy murder. <laughs> yeah. um, and I have to say too, while we're talking about musicals, even while you listen to the soundtracks, if you you have to picture the dancing in your head. You oh, know what yeah, I'm saying? For sure. That's yeah. actually, and Chicago is a great segue to a movie these guys have never seen. And I have this record because my mom used to listen to this all the time. This is called All That Jazz. Okay, so this was very much related, and that's in, they're very much related to Chicago. This was a Bob Fosse movie with uh, on Broadway, George Benson. I know if you've 
never heard it, you must hear it now, but it was brilliant and trippy and all about the inner workings of, you know, being in a dance and singing world. So I'm going to recommend that as a movie and a soundtrack. Okay, speaking of movie soundtracks, this one's a shocker for me because I remember as a kid I hated disco and I made this like big thing about how much I hate disco. I'm a little more on the punk in the spectrum. Look at me now. I mean, <laughs> it's a favorite. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you guys listen to that? Yeah. Do you or is it just like your mom? I mean, oh, my mom has that too. My let's just have a moment about John Travolta and how every good musical that was put on film in the, I guess, 70s and 80s. <laughs> John Travolta. Yeah, so if you guys don't have the soundtrack, you have to get it. There's every, I literally, like the Bee Gees now are like kind of my favorite. I mean, maybe that's an old person who's a new company. So. No, they're great. Yeah, they're great. They're really great. Um, speaking of amazing music, maybe even better. The Wiz. The Wiz. Fantastic. He's on down that road. Quincy Jones produced this, and so you know that the music is going to be pop and amazing, but it's still a sound, it's still a score, a beautiful musical score, and come on, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, come on. Oh, it's so cool. It's just so cool. Yeah. Now, rounding out the things that we physically have here to show you from our record collection is a little number I call Jesus Christ Superstar, which I want to give a plug for all rock operas, actually. Like, I need Tommy, I need American Idiot, I need, there's so many things that I need to get on vinyl, but this is a beautiful one. And another confession that um, everything's all right was the little lullaby, that it's Mary Magdalene sings it to Jesus Christ. I sang it to my son. I don't know what to like, I'll leave that right there. But <laughs> an amazing, amazing score. And like this time of year, you might want to pull out a little Jesus yeah. Christ Superstar. I mean, you might. You want to say one word to the people that are putting original cast recordings out right now. And it's a fortune. Like Hamilton um, is. Hamilton on vinyl is like $70. Right. So, I mean, you can stream it, which is awesome. Right. But let's talk about Hamilton for a little bit. Yeah, let's have a moment. It's Hamilton, it's Lennon on Miranda, it's so good. It, I think this musical was so important, um, especially in this time, because of what's happening with politics and everything. Um, I thought, I think also it was a really nice vehicle for Lin-Manuel to show kids all around that theater is really important, because I've never seen so many kids get into theater that wouldn't normally get into theater because of this show. So I think it's so important to know that. Yeah, and I am going to plug right now that by the time this video is out, the mixtape, like Hamilton mixtape, is going to be so you'll stream it on Spotify. It's already out, but like it's coming way out, and maybe it's for sale. I don't even know. I'm plugging it because it's so intensely good. And you see all these amazing pop performers who are like, let me in because this is like a milestone, and that's a musical score. That's why music musical scores are so important. You have to have them in your record collection. I'm going to chime in and then ask the girls if they have any to add to. There's a coffee mug on the end of the table. Yes, this is the sound of music, and I'm just gonna weep because I've been on a search for this on vinyl for so long, I can't begin to tell you, and the hills are always alive. Always alive with the sound of music, and once again, I did play Baker Field as male. <laughs> it was actually an all-girl production, so it wasn't as bad as a side story, but yeah, so that's, I would say, if I could get anything on vinyl, this minute it would be sound music. Original, original cast recording. Or and go on Yeah. So about you Trudy. Okay, so there is one more show that is represented here that I do need to tell you guys about. No, I'm not really that into Valium, but I am into the show Next to Normal, which is another one of those things that I would love to find out there in some record bin somewhere because Alice Ripley is like so amazing. Amazing. And all the music from that show was so inspirational because it was so different, you know? And that's I like again in the ilk of Hamilton, like just mm -hmm. not what you would expect from a, you know, an old schooly uh, musical. So good. So good. What about you, Allie? What are we missing? Um, we're missing I can go on and on. Um Fun Home is so fantastic. It's so relevant, just like Hamilton. Um, the Alice stories, and Beckel. Alice and Beckel, the stories about her and her kind of relationship with her dad. And, um, it's so compelling and the music is so great. It closed in September, but it's touring, so you should definitely go see it. This was the most awesome thing about when we did Record Collection Must Haves last time, was that people gave me lists and lists and lists of their favorite music. And we went back and forth and it's so fun. So please comment. I want to hear what you guys have 
where you're finding, because this is like, I'm going to say this and say it is interesting. Hard to find those musical scores in used record shops, which is where I like to shop. It's hard to find them. Hard to find good ones. I found like 4,000 of like Night of the Iguana. I don't know, but like, you know, just like plucking a little Jesus Christ Superstar out of a bin was very exciting. So you tell me in the comments, tell us in the comments what you like. And also, if you like what we're doing here, please like us, please subscribe. It's a True Story comes to you every first and third Thursday of the month. And I just want to say thank you to the girls because they're so kick-ass and because they both can sing and because they both can act and they both love musicals so much. And I want to say thank you to you guys because you're amazing. And I know you have amazing record picks too. So remember, tell me in the comments and until next time, guys, you know, just, uh, I don't know, ease on down the road and have a very nice holiday season. Bye.